When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person that walked into it. That's what the storm is all about. When you can't control what's happening to you, control how you respond to it. That's where your power is. You've just gone through a breakup and it's the worst thing you've ever been through. Some of you, you lost your job and you thought that job was it. And so all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're thinking, man, I thought my life was together. Now it's in shambles at my feet. No, it's not. It's all right. A blade does not become strong until it's been through the fire. Everyone sets goals in life. It's what we do. But what separates us is that some of them will turn it into a dream that can never come true. But some of us, the 5% that are willing to go beyond the norm, will turn the dream into it becomes a reality. And when it finally does come true, you know what we do? We simply begin to dream other dreams. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. So whatever is in your imagination, God places the life he has for you in your imagination. Because your imagination is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. You've got a lot more forge time left. You've got a lot more hammer blows left. And it takes time. Embrace the process. You say, Dwayne, what process? Life. Embrace the journey and the process of life. The price of regret is much heavier than the price of discipline. You never want to wake up one day, one week, one month, one year down the road and go, Shh, man, I wish I would have listened to my gut. I wish I would have done this thing. You don't want to live in regret. If there's something you want to get done in work, your relationships, school, whatever it is, do it. I don't give a damn where you're from or whatever. It's about building your own mentality, being your own hero, being the best person you can be so you're not putting people above you. The worst thing you can ever do in life is put people above you. Because what happens there is you believe you can't reach that. You must believe that you're on a, on a level playing field with every person in the world. And that starts with mentality. It always keeps you in the game, it keeps you in the fight, it keeps you in the battle, it keeps you moving forward. When you, when you have something you want to do, if you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. It's an interesting thing about life I've also found that if you don't have the courage to act, sometimes and particularly, if you have something special to do, life will move on you. So the answer is very simple. After you achieve the goal, do you stop? No. You get up and you go again. Dream bigger, dream wider, dream louder, dream more affirmative. Dream so that it is so loud that others can hear it and it wakes them up as well. Just keep pursuing all your dreams, no matter how wild they may seem. You have to have a goal in mind. And our dreams are that goal. But it's gonna be some things that you gonna hit in life. I promise you. It ain't, it ain't gonna matter how much money in the bank. I promise you. It ain't gonna matter what type of shoes you got on. I promise you. It ain't gonna matter the square footage of your house. It ain't gonna matter. I promise you. If you learn to overcome fear, when you face fear, it leaves you. Face the thing you fear, and it'll leave you. That's really the secret of it. In fact, if you hold yourself back because of fear, your life actually comes to a stop because nothing gets better than it is. Like when you go to sleep, what do you do? You pretend to be asleep, and then you fall asleep. Becoming who it is that you want to be is no different. When you decide who you want to be, like today, you have to realize that that's who you were. Okay, and so for you to become who you want to be, you don't just become that. You have to start behaving as if you are that 
and then eventually you will actually materialize into that. I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Don't have time to regret. We move on because we are acceptable for what we are, not what we think we should be. Realizing that even if you failed, you've had divorces, you've had breakups, you've had separation of a job, you've had injuries, you've had health issues, but now that you battled back, and even if you lost absolutely everything, you have all those experiences now behind your back. And that is the thing that will push you forward. That and your trust and faith that God will never give you more than what you can handle. And now that you have a handle on those things, you put a handle on your dreams. Grab them and bring them into focus. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. The problem with your imagination is you tell it to the wrong people. You got to keep dreaming. And then turn those dreams into a reality. Your hardships, your challenges, your situation will either be the reason you don't make it or it will be the story you tell when you do make it and you get to make that choice. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. When we wake up, there's often the thought, it's time to do what beasts do. And for most of us, we have thought that that means go full tilt at all times and chase. But like a lion that's chasing down his last meal, if you just give chase to everything, you will wear out the energy reserve and find yourself frustrated. You must be a beast, but that beast must also transform to the right beast at the right moment. When you're waking up every morning by yourself and you're fucking getting after it by yourself and it's the hidden work. They don't see as much fucking man what they deal with every fucking day. All those mornings that you don't want to fucking get up and I look at it as like a rock and you find this fucking rock and that rock is you. And every day you fight not wanting to get up and you do anyway. You chip another piece off that fucking rock and every day you fucking eat the right foods and every day you go to train and you train harder and harder and harder and harder and you get up early and all these things you do to start forming yourself. You're chipping another fucking piece of that rock up. Before you know it, you have this beautiful fucking piece of artwork that you built. Stop wasting the pain. Stop going through breakups and not learning the lesson. I'm tired of making dumb decisions. You gotta stop wasting your pain and you gotta learn from what you have been through. If you want to last, you must sometimes be the fox and plan out your day and think about a strategy and how am I going to win? Even if I take a loss in the moment, it's a lesson. I can live and keep learning and apply it toward a victory when most people have thought that I should have given up. You see, there's more to you than just being a beast. You must be calculated. You must be planned. You must be diligent. You must set a plan. You must set a course of action. We know you got the talent and the skill set, skill set to succeed. Oftentimes, a person has talent, skill set, ability to succeed, mm -hmm. that's great. Mm -hmm. But do you have the guts to fail? If I'm consistent, I give myself the opportunity to be exceptional. 
I feel as if it's a lot of exceptional people that are not consistent. And I want you to understand that the reason, most likely, that you didn't achieve what it is that you wanted to achieve is because you don't truly believe that you have it in you to achieve these things. You see them as special. You see the people who accomplish these things as special. And what I need you to understand and what I want you to understand moving into the next year is that all of these people that you observe living a better life than you, in your opinion, all of these people you admire, all of these people that you look up to, all of them, every single one of them, is no different on the inside than you are. Because worn down is beat. The things that don't go my way, they just turn into targets that I'm going to attack harder. This is yours. You're the captain, you're the master, you're the foreman, you're the general, you're the head. Don't give control of this to nobody. So when I don't see the point and I feel like my life is being dismantled, could it be that God's preparation comes packaged as pain? And maybe if you could see it that way, it wouldn't take the pain away, but it would give the pain a purpose. If you could see what you've been calling a failure really wasn't a failure. It was a foundation. You cannot be focused on what was when you want to chase down what can be. And when you chase down what can be, you enjoyed the journey because this is the reward, not the destination. Because the destination, if it were just given to you, when you've been face down, when you felt like you should have given up or could have given up, and you get back up and you chase down everything that was being held back from you and you believe that you can overcome and you have opponents that try to stop you but then you get up and you go after that opponent and once you conquer them and you've overcome those demons, those fears, those frustrations that once held you back. You are the perfect version of you already. You are the version of you that other people will love. All you have to do is give yourself permission to go be it. And that's going to require you to get uncomfortable. That's going to require you to put yourself out there. People aren't gonna get it until they can get it. And you have it in you. I said my challenge is this. Sometimes as people, an individual can be so arrogant and they can live their lives and feel as if Oh, when a challenge arises, when opposition arises, when change arises, when uncertainty arises, I'll just be ready for it and I'll rise to the occasion. And I think we all know in life you don't rise to the occasion, you revert back to your training. Meaning the individual that you were prior to the opposition, prior to the challenge, prior to the uncertainty, that is the individual that's going to show up in the midst of it every single time. The quote says it. You judge the true character and caliber of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the true character and caliber of a person by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. It means more because of what it costs you. And when it costs you something, it has a price that cannot be paid by immediately being given. It's every day that you get up in the beast mode. But the mode of beast must be altered based on the situation. Courage is the strength to stand up when it's easier to just fall down and lose hope. Courage is the conviction to explore a new horizon when it was easier to just believe what you've been told about life. Courage is the desire to maintain your integrity when everyone else will simply look the other way. 
Courage is the feeling that you can be happy and feel alive and keep moving forward when it's easier to feel sorry for ourselves and just stay in bed. Winners, champions, do not value motivation at all. I never think, do I feel like doing this? Is how do I get sh done regardless of how I feel? Because that's where the champions live. If you only fucking execute when you feel like it or the stars are aligned, you can only execute when you feel like executing, you will fucking lose 100 times out of 100. I mean, being in the military does not make you a disciplined person. Being from a disciplined family does not make you a disciplined person. Being in a disciplined group does not make you a disciplined person. What makes you a disciplined person is choosing to be disciplined. Stop doing the things that you know are wrong, that you could stop doing. I want you to think about those goals. I want you to taste them. I want you to, I want, I want you to be, I want you to internalize it. I'm telling you to dream your dream because I want you to feel it. I want you to taste it. I want you to know how close, I, I want you just like when the weather is changing, you can feel it. I want you to be able to feel when you're getting closer to it and closer to it. But more importantly, I want you to know when you dream your dream that there are other people who are dreaming the exact same dream. And now I ask you this question, what do you do when a thousand other people want exactly what you want? What if you're not the only one that wants what you want? What if there are thousands of other people who want what you want, you have to outwork them. You gotta outbind them. You gotta get up earlier. You gotta stay up later. You gotta execute and you gotta go from 70 to 120. Get up, go, fight on. Courage is the will to shape our world into what it can be when it's easier to simply say that someone else can do it. You see, courage is it's recognition that none of us are perfect. And when it's easier to simply live a life criticizing others for what they haven't done or what they could have done or what they should have done, but courage is the power to step forward and to lead. You're suffering from self-doubt while others are intimidated by your full potential. If your past self could see where you're at today, think of how impressed they would be. One of the greatest ways you can overcome self-doubt is to realize how far you've come. Maybe you're not exactly where you want to be, but you're a lot better than where you were. And the key is to wake up every single day, put one foot in front of the other, keep moving and keep growing. You must understand that motivation is for average people. Motivation is for people that lose more than they win. Discipline is where everybody who's ever achieved anything great that you admire, that is what they value. That's what they strive for. That's the skill that they make investments in. And that's why their lives look so great that you want something like that for yourself. You need to know it. You need to take that God that's sitting there with you and those precious souls that have passed that have always believed in you and you carry them with you everywhere. They're with you anyway. Acknowledge them. If you don't believe that, honor them. Honor God. Honor these people who believe in you with your magnificent life. Honor them. Don't give in to lack of belief, lack of confidence. Don't ever do that again. You were made to do something great. You're special. You were made in the image of God. Something awesome is supposed to happen for you. And those of you that have made something awesome happen, something even more awesome is supposed to happen for you. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself, and don't be afraid to be different, man. You ain't got to fit in the crowd. Why are you following everybody when you were clearly meant to lead? You can turn your life around, because it ain't never too late. Do not take the easy way out. Do not give up based on instinct. Destroy that instinct.
This is the instinct that says, you've had enough. You've given it your best shot. You can stand down. You can back off. You can take a knee. This is the instinct that says, you can rest now. Do not listen. Because that instinct is a liar and wants to bring you down. You see, this instinct is a defense mechanism for your ego. It gives you an out, a place to run to, a place of sympathy, an amnesty where all can be forgiven. Where failures gather together in comfort and drown their sorrows in lies and deception. It's the terms of the foundation. And when you have that foundation, it is solid. It is a rock that will not roll. Freedom of your mind, of your body, and of your soul. You ever want to truly be free? You have to stand up and have courage. Because when you have that, that ingredient of life that makes you stand out and become different than what the crowd is, you will become a leader in that crowd. And with leadership comes responsibilities. And when you set forth that plan in life to become everything that you were born to be, you will give people the, the inspiration that they can do it as well. But until they see it in you, they don't know it's possible. It's all in your mind. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. If you continue to believe as you have always believed, you will continue to act as you have always acted. You will continue to get what you have always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. Wisdom comes from experience, and experience takes time. The more experience you have, and the more you learn from that experience, the wiser you can get. A pine tree grows and matures very fast. An oak tree grows and matures very, very slow. Which one lasts longer? And which one is stronger? Which one shelters more critters and more birds? Which one, when it's done and over and it's cut down, which one is more valuable for the lumber? We're all looking for this golden purpose. Is it this? Is it that? Is it making money? It, is, it, is it my family? Motherfucker, the purpose is you. Every fucking day I wake up and I don't want to do some fucking shit. I'm like, okay, man, do you want to be a bitch today? Do you want to walk around all day knowing that you could, but you didn't? You have to learn how to get up and do shit when you ain't got no fucking 5K, no 10K, nothing. Nothing exists. Your life fucking sucks. You're in the fucking dungeon. But guess what, motherfucker? I'm still going to get it. First of all, don't aim at being happy because that's just not going to work, especially when the storms come and uh, barbarians are beating at the gate. You can just forget about that. And there's going to be times in your life where you're suffering so much you can't believe it. And so you're going to need something a hell of a lot more robust than happiness to get you through that. And then you might say, well, what's more robust than happiness? Or maybe even what's more robust than pain? How about adventure? How about we go out and sail the uncharted seas, you know? But our life situation predominantly is our fault. It's our fault. When you get knocked down and you get broken open, that's when you really get to know your true self. Suffering is awesome. You know, you get knocked down and split in half. You stand, you walk out in the world. If you choose, you have a choice. You can contract and become bitter and never open up again, like most people, or you can actually use the tragedy or suffering or whatever you've gone through to allow it to purify you. Tragedy and pain is life's greatest purifier. Holding the line. Maintaining the standard. 
giving no slack, none. That's the discipline. What's God? God is that which calls you to make the appropriate sacrifices and calls you on it when you don't. And try to escape that and see what happens. We know perfectly well, perfectly well, that that's a pathway to hell. And you might say, I don't believe in hell. And I would say, that means you don't know anything. Do you abide by that or not? Well, you do if you're wise and you do if you care about the people around you. You gotta be willing to do the work. You can speak about it all day. The easiest thing in the world to do is to complain, blame, and quit and settle. That's the easiest thing in the world to do. But it takes real work to deconstruct and to reconstruct the thought process and the mindset of an individual when they're trying to change something. That's why I always say to people, what's more important, what we acquire or who we become? Right? What's more important, what we acquire or who we become? Materialistic, superficial, it's cool. But the people that we become, the thoughts we think, the words we speak, that's something that's going to travel with us forever. Are you a leader? Are you ready to become one? Are you willing to step up to the plate and become that person that everyone can follow into battle and trust that you won't run, you won't turn back your back, you won't hide when the rocks get thrown, but you will step in front of everyone else to protect them because you don't sit on the throne. Let the process do what the process does. The process is there for a reason. The process is there to strengthen you and build you. The process teaches you things along the journey that no skipping steps could have taught you, that no faking it till you make it could have taught you, that no overnight success could have taught you. The journey isn't always beautiful, but the journey is always purposeful. So start telling yourself, this is a part of the process. We are absolutely divine, magnificent expressions of life, all of us. Where each face is another unique expression of God. And we're not supposed to be alike. Since time began on this planet, there have not been two snowflakes alike. There have certainly not been two people alike. And we're always trying to be like everybody else so we're acceptable. Our uniqueness is what makes us wonderful. What you most want to be found will be found where you least want to look, essentially. And it's so interesting because it means that if you're willing to turn around and to stand up, say, and stand up straight and face the darkness like fully, what you discover at the darkest part is the brightest light and then that's something that's so much worth discovering because there's going to be terrible darkness in your life and it's going to make you cynical and bitter and it could easily be that you're just not looking at it enough because if you looked at it enough and you didn't shy away and you brought everything you had to bear on it, you'd find that there was more to you than there was to the horror. I don't know what your future is, but if you're willing to take the harder way, the more complicated one, the one with more failures at first than successes, the one that has ultimately proven to have more meaning, more victory, more glory, then you will not regret it. Whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. If you've been frustrated because it just seems like you can't get a break, then welcome to the club. All of us have been there. All of us must go through that. But understand in those broken moments, in those broken pieces, in those fragments of your life, there is a puzzle being put together by the hand of God through your hard work and through your experiences. You only see part of it because the water looks murky. 
But if you can just let the mud settle of life, you can look through and finally see there was a bigger picture. People have problems and they're often annoyed and oppressed by the fact they have problems. But first of all, you don't have all the problems in the world. You have your problems and the problems that bother you. And you might ask yourself, well, why do those problems bother you and not other problems? And I would say maybe it's because in those problems you actually find your destiny. You have to lose your fear of failure. Failure is a part of the process. People who never fail, never try. You have to fail. You gotta get it wrong to get it right. You learn nothing from winning. You only learn from your failures. If you don't have what you want, stop telling yourself the story because you don't have the money over time. That's bullshit. It's because you haven't committed yourself where you would burn your boats. If you want to take the fucking island, burn your fucking boats and you will take the island because people, when they're going to either die or succeed, tend to succeed. I don't care where you come from. I don't care where you were raised. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care about any of that shit. If you do the work consistently, if you invest in yourself consistently, one plus one is always going to equal two. Two plus two is going to equal four. In 10 years of motherfucking work, when everybody else is partying, making excuses, doing the cool thing on the weekend, it's going to pay off. You can do this. Your sacrifices, the phrases and things that people placed in your head that you could not, that tried to derail you, have to come into conflict with the things that are said within you that says, I can do it. I know I can overcome it. You have to understand that life also goes through phases. There are segments and sections of your life that are going to make you have to develop patience. Man should learn to detect and watch that gleam of light which flashes across his mind from within, more than the luster of the firmament of bards and sages. Yet he dismisses without notice his own thought, because it's his own. In every work of genius, we recognize our own rejected thoughts. They come back to us with a certain alienated majesty. We often reject our thoughts and we see the things that we think of as grand and as genius and we reject them because they're our own. Treasuring our divinity instead of being terrified of it. Knowing that I am always connected to my source. There is no way that I cannot because it is in you and I am in you and you are in me and you can never be separated from it. There is no place that this source is not. It beats everybody's heart. It opens all the flowers and you're always connected to it. Every time I've lost, people say, you gotta jump right back up. I disagree with that. After you lose, or when you get knocked down, stay down there for a minute. Understand why you lost. What were the reasons? Why are you down here? Why did you lose? So every time I lost, I stayed down for a second. Minutes, hours, days. But when I stood up, I was different. I was smarter. Now you start putting the pieces that are necessary to win over and over and over again. Sometimes we get stuck in these situations where we start looking to other people for our self-esteem and sometimes we find ourselves looking in broken mirrors to get a reflection of ourselves. You don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed, to beat yourself up over the head. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. There is nothing 
on the outside of greatness, but good. But good is on the outside of what's capable for you. But you can never get to good, you can never get to great without going through the bad. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. If you want to take the island, burn the boats. 